measures the magnetic field at the plane's location without measuring the plane's individual magnetic field. You can think of it as a pre-cleaned data, uh, data source, as well as four to five sources of noisy data from magnetometers placed within the cockpit. Several of them were placed close to where the pilot was sitting in the cockpit. Some of them were placed further back of the cabin, some on the floor, some on the ceiling, and one was placed next to a fuel pump that was particularly magnetically noisy. Additionally, during this flight, several aircraft maneuvers and in-cockpit pilot actions were performed. An example of these maneuvers were things like turning, accelerating, decelerating, turning on, uh, making, turning on lights, turning off lights, turning on a fuel pump, turning off a fuel pump. And for the pilot's actions, they would do things like move uh, a bar around behind them in the cockpit, which would cause a DC shift in the magnetic field, as it is a magnetically active iron bar. All in all, this means that the four to five magnetometers within the cockpit saw a large variety of magnetic noise that was both due to the aircraft and due to changes within the aircraft's magnetic field. Since you can't calibrate out a lot of those temporally constrained uh, noise sources via conventional calibration. We wanted to make sure that of these temporal noise sources, the vast majority of them were available in both the evaluation data set and the training data set. So as we were selecting our evaluation data set, we made sure to select data points which had both specific pilot actions, specific plane actions, and a variety of airplane maneuvers and altitudes in order to approximately reflect the variety of those things within the training set that we're uh, distributing. The training set is approximately five-sixths of the total collected data, and the evaluation or judgment data set is approximately one-sixth of the total flight data. All of the flight data that we are releasing includes the truth channel, so they include that tail stinger, as well as the GPS position of the aircraft, which can be used in conjunction with a magnetic anomaly map to get a secondary truth channel, which acts as effectively the map that you would normally consult in order to perform navigation via this uh, magnetic signal. Something to keep in mind when looking at this data set is that there are three distinct locations wherein we collected our data set. The westernmost location is the Renfrew flight area, uh, denoted by that red polygon on the left, and the easternmost location is the eastern flight collection area, denoted by that red shape on the bottom right of the image. The final location that we collected data was from the figure of merit area, or that black square on the top middle that has the pins on it, which is used for conventional calibration. We asked Sanders to collect data while doing this conventional calibration so that we had effectively a baseline where we could compare our results to results yielded through conventional calibration, such as the Toll's Lawson equation. These three areas, while relatively distinct, should provide a, a nice variety of data to work with. Additionally, here is a subset of the fields that were, are made available within the data set. You'll see that there are several fields such as flux gates, marked flux B, C, and D, which 